It doesn't take a lot of effort to crush an aluminum can. So when people refer to cars with flimsy build quality, they often compare them to just such a container. This may be amusing, but it's hardly accurate. Aluminum is not a cut-rate alternative to steel. It's actually a very promising material for the future of the automobile. Lisa Barrow is back again to explain. Aluminum in automobiles is really nothing new. The Ford Model T used it in the transmission and hood, and it was used in race cars by Jaguar and Mercedes-Benz. Today, the $70,000 Acura NSX is the most aluminum-intensive car available, using 1,000 pounds of the alloy. Manufacturers most often use aluminum in parts like the engine, cylinder head, suspension, and wheels. In 1994, Audi will be the first volume car builder to introduce a four-door sedan featuring an aluminum space frame along with its cast aluminum V8 engine. Currently, Ford is the largest producer of aluminum components, using the alloy in hoods on its luxury models, and the new Mark 8 uses almost 500 pounds throughout. Ford is now experimenting with an all-aluminum vehicle. Called Synthesis 2010, it's a version of the current Taurus, but is one-third lighter and almost entirely recyclable. Ford has a, has a major uh, advanced program uh, designed to study the potential for high volume aluminum cars and the synthesis 2010 is part of that program. And it was really a demonstration of how far you could take a, a family size sedan and how far you could take it down in weight by using aluminum and then downsizing all the components to match the lighter vehicle weight that you, you get. Since 1971, auto manufacturers have more than doubled their use of aluminum from an average of 77 pounds per car to 191. So why are manufacturers turning so much attention to aluminum? A major advantage is uh, the weight reduction and the better fuel economy that comes with it. And that's why we've been using it uh, as, as long as we have and as, as much as we've gotten it to. A lightweight car made of aluminum or other lightweight materials can have improved acceleration better handling in the corners, be fully recyclable, and add to the recycling value of the car. Because of its lighter weight, actually reduces the emissions of the vehicle itself. Its other advantages include high strength. For example, in a crash, a 25-pound aluminum structure will perform as well as a 50-pound steel structure. It's also easy to cast and fabricate, is virtually non-corrosive, and out of the aluminum used in cars today, more than 85% is reclaimed and recycled. Well, as part of a, any major study of, a, of aluminum application, you do look at recycling. You look at it in detail. And the intent would be that you could, you could totally, at the end of its useful life, recycle the vehicle structure. But there are some downsides to using aluminum. One is cost. Aluminum is generally half the weight, but twice the cost of steel. We have 80 years' experience building, or 90 years' experience now, building steel cars. So one, certainly one of the disadvantages in building a car of aluminum is our knowledge base is much less. Uh, manufacturing challenges that aluminum presents are, are the, in the welding. Uh, someone said that it, it takes uh, the instantaneous energy to weld aluminum is about uh, two or three times that of steel. And someone said, in fact, that to weld aluminum on high volume, you're going to dim the lights in Detroit. But experts think aluminum's promises outweigh its problems. I think it probably is the way to go, an all-aluminum car. At least it's the way to, to uh, try to answer the pressures from the environment, from the fuel, from the uh, major changes uh, that are facing the car in the, in the longer-term future. 